airlines, airports, and telecommunications. So in order to solve the problem of, uh, of uh, lack of infrastructure, we need to amend these uh, restrictive provisions in the Constitution. However, I would like to uh, leave to my colleagues in the business and economic community to further expound and elaborate on the economic benefits of uh, uh, removing these restrictions in the Constitution. What I would like to dwell on is the national security aspect of the need to amend these restrictive provisions in our Constitution. Because the President himself has stated that on his remaining two and a half years in office, China is the top of his mind. What I contend is that we need, if China is up with fine, we need to strengthen national security, and we can only do that if we remove these restrictive provisions in the Constitution. Uh, first of all, it's important to national security that our strategic infrastructure be modernized. We have seen, after Yolanda, how our decrepit infrastructure has hobbled our government. Telecommunication facilities were down. It was very hard to bring uh, goods to, uh, to Leyte. The only way we can modernize our infrastructure is if we allow well-capitalized foreign investors to come in here and help modernize our airports, telecoms, and seaports. Secondly, the President has asked that uh, the United States and allies you know, help us in our dispute with China. But if their investments in the country remain paltry, what is their economic interest to help us? If their investments in the country become bigger, the more they will be inclined to help us to ensure that there's freedom of navigation and that there will be the, the territorial integrity and the maritime sovereignty of the Philippines be upheld because they have an economic interest to, to ensure our territorial integrity. So I think it is important that we open up our country for foreign investments in order to strengthen us in our uh, fight to defend our territorial integrity. Third, there is the matter of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is the foundation for the, U, for the U.S. repivot or rebalancing toward Asia. In order for us to join and become a full member of the TPP, which is a free trade um, agreement among the <clears throat> Pacific countries, we need to equalize treatment with foreign investors. We need to amend our constitution to allow equality between foreign and local investors. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is a strategic initiative. Even Japan, which had, which had its rice farmers objecting to uh, membership in the TPP has agreed to has agreed to join because it sees this as a strategic initiative in its <coughs> possible conflict with China. So again, a matter of national security, we need to join TPP if you are going to. <coughs> so it's not only the economic benefit involved in joining the TPP that we must uh, amend our constitutional uh, uh, restrictions on the, on the provisions in the Constitution, the ownership provisions. Fourth, 
Right now, these constitutional restrictions uh, result in what economists call adverse selection. This means that only foreign investors who are willing to use dummies or creative legal maneuvers are willing to invest in this country. So we are at danger that even triads or foreign criminal gangs can use dummies to get around these constitutional restrictions and establish businesses in our strategic industries. Let us face it. For example, in the area of telecoms, Indonesian capital is really behind uh, PLDT, and Singaporean capital is behind Globe Telecom. However, even, even their investments in, in these uh, companies are at risk because of the Gamboa decision in the Supreme Court. The Carpio Orbiter in the, in the Gamboa decision states that even preferred stock must be subject to 60, the 6040 rule. Now, what do you think that these companies will start, will keep on reinvesting capital to modernate, modernize our facilities, our infrastructure facilities with this sort of Damocles hanging over their heads? I think it's very important that we make everything transparent and attract world-class companies to come to the Philippines and do business, especially in public utilities and other strategic industries. The fourth reason why it's a national security concern is because the Bank Samoro Peace Agreement, I think, the basic law, will, will, will be helped if foreign investments will be allowed, will be liberalized and opened up so that other foreign investments can flow into the Bank Samoro Autonomous Region to help them achieve economic prosperity under autonomy. So these are the reasons, I think, why we should amend the, <coughs> the restrictive provisions in our Constitution. And it answers the President's concern about our national security. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chief Counsel.